How are you doing, Egypt? Good, how are you? Good. Um, I just want to ask about the bye week. You know, how was it? How did you use it, I guess, to rest and recover? And did you get a chance to go home, maybe see some family or anything like that? Uh, no, I was actually here all weekend. Um, I just spent a lot more time in the film room with my teammates and uh, in the recovery beds, taking advantage of uh, having a chance to get some rest. EJ, what's, what's the challenge this week facing a Minnesota offense that is really heavy on the run and focuses on a dominant time possession? Um, you know, you put, like you said, dominating time possession, you know, trying to get those guys off the field uh, and give our offense a chance to go out there and put up some points. And, um, you know, with a team like that who run the ball as much as they do it and the consistency of their offense, you know, not drawing a lot of penalties and stuff, uh, you just got to play discipline. You know, everyone's got to do their job. Um, and just to keep that up for four quarters, you know, and um, give our offense a chance to, to do something. James had mentioned the, their success on third down is partially because of how good they are on first down and getting into third and short situations. Yep. How much are you guys as defense putting an emphasis on putting them in second and long, third and long situations this week? You know, that's been a huge emphasis. You know, Coach Price said is, uh, you know, they get into situations where it's second and third, third and one, and, you know, that could end up having us in a long game. Um, just getting after it on first and second down, you know, we got to put those guys in negative yard situations or a new game so we uh, have a better chance of getting off the field because they're great in um, those situations when it's short. E. Tor, uh, one of your teammates is in line, uh, PJ Mustafer, to get a lot more, like, well, I guess a little bit more fighting time to get the start Saturday against Minnesota. So, um, you know, as one of his teammates, I'm just curious, first of all, if you had to describe him in one word, uh, what would it be? And, and where's the confidence in, the, in this defensive line, you know, even with, you know, kind of a, a quote unquote new guy, um, yeah. you know, starting this weekend? Uh, describe him in one word. I feel like it's hard. He's a huge personality. Um, but I think it's probably like hard working. You know, he's always someone after practice, you can find him uh, on the sled by himself or any group. Uh, every Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, work day, he's out there striking the sled, getting extra work in. So, um, I mean, as a unit and as a defense, I think we have the utmost confidence PJ. You know, uh, Tone not being able to start for us this week, um, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that he's gonna come in and uh, do his part. You know, since he's been here, um, he comes into games and people see the flash, like PJ's a, a big playmaker. So I think it's just gonna be more opportunity for him to uh, really step into that role. What time do you normally get up on day to day? Like day to day? Yeah, well, like when a Saturday comes around and you gotta get up in the morning for like a noon kick. Oh, uh, Saturday. Uh, I'm usually up at like 8 a.m. So does it make a difference at all that this game starting at 11 instead of noon, technically? Um, is it? I don't know what time we're waking up. I mean, I don't really think it's gonna make much of a difference, honestly. Uh, you go out there and treat it the same way. And, and do you notice the difference in the size of the linemen that you're going up against? I mean, if you're going up against a 500 pound, I mean, not 500 pounds, but a, a very large guy versus maybe somebody in the non-conference that's not quite your size, I mean, do you kind of notice that or are you just going out and doing your thing regardless? Uh, just more more of a, you know, just go out there doing my thing regardless, you know? Um, the game plan, uh, my job, none of it changes based on what we're playing, so. Hey, Tor, how you doing? Um, I had a chance to, to speak with Jason after the Michigan State game. Yeah. I think he said that he, he felt like he needed that game. He mm -hmm. felt like a, he was kind of pressing a little bit to that point, and, and it, to see that in the box score made a difference for him. Did you notice at all with Jason over the course of the year? Like, you know, can you tell like he needed that kind of a game? Did he was he acting like that at all? I don't think he was acting like it. Uh, maybe to himself, you know, his personal goals, whatever. But he approached practice the same way in terms of how he came. Uh, and worked out for the team, so um, you know I know he was really excited, real happy that uh, he was able to do what he did on that Saturday. It was a great moment for all of us, but uh, I couldn't tell. When you go to the package that, that you slide inside, and yeah. and Jason's opposite of Shaka, what does that front present to a defense, uh, to an offensive line, um, in terms of the difficulty? Um, there's just a lot of speed coming from a lot of different places. So I think you know, a lot of those lines, um, real quick to uh, point out the protections um, and identify who's where. So 
um, I would um, not too sure on it. When, and when you're inside, I mean, is it, is it, is it a comfortable thing for you? Is it yeah, like something, it, if, if say, you know, knock on wood, there was some kind of injury and, and with Antonio already missing, is it a spot you could spend some extended time in rather than just like a special package? Uh, I spend time wherever Coach Spence needs me to play. All right. So it doesn't matter where it is on the line. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no rush. Everybody will get a question. I like it. Uh, Itor, we were asking Coach Franklin about the whole one and mantra and how it yeah. seems like now you guys aren't just repeating it, you're kind of living it and embracing it. Was there a certain point where you felt like you took that on and weren't just reciting it? Or you always... uh, I'd say probably when I got back to school over the summer, mm -hmm. uh, going into camp and um, you know, I feel like there's something that really resonated with me when he was talking about how you know, it really makes a difference. And, you know, teams, they try to prepare differently um, based on what week it is and the opponent. And you, pre uh, you approach it all the same way. You know, like this is our championship. You know, like this is the week, you know. And with that mindset, I feel like it creates a, a culture of winning. So. Was that kind of maybe difficult to do when you were younger and maybe you wanted to look ahead a little bit? <laughs> yeah, you know, like at first you um, – get a place like this, uh, you know, you play in like the big, big name schools versus, you know, some of our other opponents. Um, I feel like it's more difficult then, but as you grow and as you fall into the, um, just the awareness, like this is it, you know, this is what we're doing. Um, and you just trust and believe in coaches. Uh, I think that's for everybody. Will you even look at the college football playoff rankings tonight when they come out? Or? No. I wanted to ask you about uh, uh, kind of building off of a question from earlier. So Minnesota's right tackle weighs 136 pounds more than you and 157 pounds more than Shaka. Have you ever faced a weight disparity like that, you know, in your career? And, and how do you go about, you know, beating someone on the line who is almost, you know, like essentially more than 50% of your body weight? <laughs> uh, I don't think I have, honestly, but. Um... It'll be a great task, you know, they have some pretty good players on that side. Um, but I don't think the approach is going to be any different. Um, you know, his job is to block me and my job is to get around him, so we'll figure something out. How have you guys kind of seen Rasheed Walker develop here in the last year or so? Yeah, uh, I think the biggest growth with him was over spring ball. You know, at first it was obvious, you know, he's learning things and uh, stepping into like a new role. But I think his confidence from that point to the beginning of the season, the beginning of the season now, has just grown so much. Uh, I think he's grown into one of the better players on this team. Um, he's done absolutely, he's done a great job. I can't remember if it was you or Shaka in the one clip in the spring that they tweeted out. You guys, somebody beat him pretty big. Um, did you guys razz him at all about that? I mean, because he's obviously held his own this year. I'm sorry, I, didn't, I missed that. Yeah, you, there was a clip that was tweeted out in spring ball when he got beat pretty bad either by you or Shaka. Um, did you guys let him hear that, or was it just, I mean, because he's obviously held his own this year. Um, I, I didn't say a word to him about it. Um, you know, I, I, you know, everyone loses reps, you know. No one's going to win every single rep, so uh, I don't think it really bothered him that much. Or... Any of us, you know, he's gonna he's gonna win his battles um, sometimes and sometimes not. So, and are there ways that you think maybe you know you guys have helped him or can help him? Maybe pointing out specific things that other ends might try to do to him or anything like that. Um, anything he's had a question on, we've been pretty good about answering it. And, um, just going against him, you know, sometimes like, oh, this works, this works, and now it's more like, okay, now what works, you know, because he's developed a lot, so. Last one for me, I promise. Um, what do you think the ceiling looks like for Michael Parsons? Because we're seeing more and more from him every week. Yeah. Um, the ceiling. I don't know. I don't know what that would look like for him. You know, every day he goes out there, and you know, I feel like he surprises me more and more. So um, he's just someone who just keeps growing. You know, I think he's going to end up having a phenomenal career. Do you remember the Nike camp in New Jersey? You were there, and Michael was there, and Damien, and he was kind of talking trash about how he was the 
the best DN. Do you recall that? Yeah. What, what was going through your head when you see this kid? Because he's a little bit younger than you. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, PJ Mustafa was there too. Um, but they're just kids having fun. Um, and I, it was hard to like really imagine that we'd all be in this place at the same time uh, on a team like this. So, I mean, just to see like the dream come to fruition is it's incredible. And how much of a vocal leader has he come, become in, in the huddle over these last couple of years? Because it seems like linebacker would be a position where it kind of lends itself to that. Yeah, uh, I think he's definitely growing more and more uh, as the year is going on. You know, in the beginning, he was a uh, vocal leader still, but um, as the years go on, he's really, he's really become more of a voice. Uh, last winter, Terry Smith compared uh, Adisa Isaac to you. Um, he's a guy that we've quickly gotten to see play in Burns red shirt. What stands out about it, and, and do you see any similarities uh, from, from maybe where you were as a freshman to where he is right now? Yeah, I say his motor is like the thing that I see, like in my, like for myself to him. Um, he's so on, even in practice, the plays across the field, he's still running, you know, he's running past linebackers and DBs, whoever's in the way. Um, and he brings that in the game too. He goes out there with a level of intensity and, you know, just saying that, I thought it was going to be like really important for him, you know, in his career and stuff. And, um, he's extremely hardworking too. He's quiet sometimes, but like he's always doing his job, always where he needs to be. Um, I think he's like one of the people I've noticed since I've been here is like an incredibly high ceiling. I think he's going to be phenomenal. Anything else for you, Char? I could ask just about one of your older teammates, Fred, Fred answered. We, yeah. we may or may not see more of him uh, with Antonio <clears throat> out for this game, but um, I think maybe he surprised some people how he came back from injury and has really been been the number the number two ta tackle for you guys for a while. What does he do be, like that doesn't show up in the box score, I guess, because he's not the one who's racking up all the stats. Can't move that man. <laughs> that dude is unmovable. You know, he comes off the ball, and sometimes he's getting double teamed, and you can see that they're fighting as hard as they can, but Fred's not going anywhere. So he doesn't jump off in the box score, but he's always um, helping, out, helping out the linebackers if that's uh, not letting the guards let me get to the second level or um, he eats up his space for sure.